Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt and the mosquitoes are out today, but I've got an ammunition test in store for you all today and one of our favorite flavors, 223 Remington or 556 NATO. Well, this is from Callaway Ballistics. This is their 55 grain full metal jacket remanufactured round. Let's throw this guy on the table and see what we got in store today. It's around 70 to 80 degrees outside today and overcast. It means I didn't get sunburned today and it's been a rather calm day outside except for these mosquitoes that are now attacking me. For all of our 5.56223 testing, we have a large variety of barrel lengths afforded to us. A 7.5 inch, 10.5 inch, a new 14.5 inch, 16, 20, and 22. I thought about picking up a 24 for just that really extreme, but I haven't found anyone that has a 5.56 chambered one. We'll start with our 7.5 inch barrel. It's a Palmo State Armory pistol. Got the X2 Dev Group jackal charging handle and their muzzle device on here got a bushnell trs 25 up top don't recommend that as a budget option i always recommend probably at least another 50 bucks get the romeo 5 from sig be a lot more pleased with that this one with the brightness setting at 11 is very dim And now our 10 and a half inch upper, another Palmetto State Armory build. This is on my SBR lower, the Primary Arms 3X Cyclops up top. I really like that etched reticle on here. The only downside to the magnified Cyclops is that the eye relief isn't as long, so we gotta put this further back on the rail. Got our Battle Arms safety selectors and our Radeon ambidextrous charging handle. The Yankee Hill three port cutie muzzle brake. See if we get any muzzle flash off this guy. Not seeing any muzzle flash. Looks like this load is going to be probably a very upper end 223 Remington load versus a 556 by 45 millimeter. And now new for 2022 is a 14 and a half inch upper. In full transparency, I contacted Pro 2A Tactical and worked out some details to get a 14 and a half inch 556 upper as well as a 9 by 39. So far, we've put probably 50 rounds through this upper today and we're getting Okay, ejection wise, a little on the weak side. I swapped our SBR lower over to a carbine buffer and that seemed to help. So I'm not sure if the gas port is a little undersized or not, which depending on how you're gonna run the gun, which may not be a bad thing, especially if you're running suppressed, that means less gas in your face. Looks like we're right around the two o'clock-ish ejection pattern. Almost three. That one's at three. And now on to our 16 inch. We've replaced our Stag Model 1L with another Palmetto State Armory build. And that way, less brass I have to look for because this one is right hand eject. This has a one and seven twist upper with a mid-length gas system. Got some more of that X2 Dev Group charging handle and their muzzle device on here. Got the Primary Arms 1X Cyclops on here that I can swap around from gun to gun with the ADM QD mount on there. Getting good at ejection on this particular upper. I do believe I have the H1 buffer in this lower. <laughs> a 
lock back. Yeah, looking like those are gonna be some 223 velocities. Normally with our 556, you know, M193, we're a little over 3,000 on the 16 inch. Now onto our 20 inch. This is a Palmetto State Army build. Again, I tend to buy most of my uppers from them because I have to buy a whole bunch of different barrel lengths because somehow I get convinced into buying them. So I gotta stretch those YouTube influencer duelers a little bit there. This is the one in seven twist double chrome lined FN barrel. No name no lower with our Chineseum ambidextrous charging handle. I think that was from what, four or five Black Fridays ago? It was super cheap. Whole bunch of controversy around it because it's supposed to be made in America and I don't know. I haven't broke it yet. Probably wouldn't rely on it for actual combat or duty or personal protection use. Range use, just fine. Air? What do you mean air? And finally, our 22 inch, this is our TC Compass in our Oryx chassis. Takes our Accuracy International 10 round box magazines. I like that I don't have to deal with the rotary magazines anymore. This is a really solid chassis. Good upgrade for the TC Compass. Although I think it costs more than what I paid for the rifle itself. Let me blow that stuff off my desk. Looks like we're not gaining any velocity on the 22 inch. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, our results that you see in front of your eyes are very much identical to what we saw with our Norma 55 grain full metal jacket. When we see a reduction in velocity with a 55 grain full metal jacket, at least in my skill set, we're seeing an increase in our accuracy or a shrinking of our groups. This is our Callaway Ballistics 55 grain full metal jacket 223 slash, you know, 556 load. We're a little short on calling it M193 velocity wise, but at 100 yards, TC Compass 22 inch barrel with the turbo 556 and a brand new Primary Arms Silver Line 16 power first focal plane scope. Our first group 0.69 inches, our second group 0.976, and I was actually shooting these fairly quickly. Our worst group, 1.521 inches. I might have pulled that one, but look at how close these are together. And then our fourth group, 1.171 inches. So if you're going for more accuracy, this is where you don't potentially need all that extra velocity that a M193 55 grain full metal jacket load will give you. Interesting, very solid plinking load. Great job, Callaway Ballistics. Slow and steady wins the race. This was the slowest loading that we tested out of a set of four on the same day velocity wise, but it had the best accuracy. And we've seen this before when we tested the Ruag M M193. It was the slowest out of all the loadings that we've tested, but it also gave us the best accuracy. Not everyone is always looking for screaming hot loads. If you're looking for a solid plinking load that potentially you would use in a gun that actually has a 223 Remington chamber. Something like this from Callaway Ballistics would be your best bet. With all that being said, I'm gonna get the heck out of here. And at the end of all my videos, I take a moment to thank all those who help make these possible. Number one is my Patreon and the Subscribe Star fans. I have a link tree in the description below with various ways to contact and or support me. Number two is my friends over at Callaway Ballistics who in full transparency contacted me and asked me to provide a review on some of their products. I'm really liking the different things that they have to offer and hopefully 
they're going to do some more of the less common rounds coming up like 8.6 black and 9 by 39 that would be good to have brass sources for those and of course number three is you all for watching until next time i'll catch you at the range Thank you.